3D LUT Creator can develop raw files, so in this video, I will go through raw development settings, and I will try to answer the most frequently asked questions from users on this topic. The most common question is why the developed photos in 3D LUT Creator differ from Lightroom or Capture One, and here you can replace them with other editors' names, depending on what you are using now. The answer to this question is obvious to those who have used more than one raw editor. Each software manufacturer develops its own algorithms, so the same photo in raw format will differ in different editors. This is what a camera JPEG looks like from a Fujifilm X-T2 camera. This is how a raw file looks when opened in Capture One. And this is how it looks in Lightroom. Please note, not only color, exposure, and contrast change here, but also noise level, sharpness, and even lens distortion. Therefore, it is not surprising that the raw file developed in 3D LUT Creator will also be different. 3D LUT Creator uses open source library called LibRAW to develop raw files. Development settings are located on LibRAW tab in the program settings. But before moving on to developing raw files in 3D LUT Creator and analyzing the settings, Let's take a look at how the process of obtaining an image from the camera's sensor works. After passing through the lens, light hits the sensor. There is a color filter in front of the sensor. The picture shows Bayer filter, which is the most commonly used. The filter is divided into colors where each pixel of the sensor has its own color, red, green, or blue. The camera sensor under the microscope will look like a colored mosaic. In this form, we get raw data. A color image in RGB color space consists of three channels, red, green, and blue. But in the case of a sensor, these channels will only be partially filled. To get the channels completely filled, you need to calculate the colors of the adjacent empty cells. This process is called demosaicing. After demosaicing, we get a flat gray image. Color and contrast will need to be restored. To get the correct color from a raw file, you need to apply color matrix. Next, you need to bring back the contrast. The raw file contains much wider dynamic range than the monitor can display, so the image looks flat. We add the contrast using a curve, so we get a developed image that can be processed further. The second most popular question that users usually ask is, what is this TIFF file that appears in the folder with the original RAW file? This is exactly the RAW development file after demosaicing. Typically, photo editors which work with RAW file catalogs create libraries of previews from the original RAW data. 3D LUT Creator immediately creates a developed copy of a RAW file and loads it into the program for further work. Let's move on to the third most popular question. Why do I create a LUT for a RAW file in 3D LUT Creator, then send it to Photoshop and get strange colors? This happens if you first open a RAW file in Photoshop so you develop it there. Then you open the same RAW file in 3D LUT Creator and develop it there too. Then send LUT to Photoshop where this developing LUT is applied to the already developed image. This means you have developed RAW file twice. How to get the right color? There are two ways to do it. First way, you develop the raw file in Photoshop, then load the already developed file into 3D LUT Creator, process it there as a common non-raw image, and send the LUT back to Photoshop. Second way, you develop the raw file in 3D LUT Creator, grade it there, then load the TIFF developed in 3D LUT Creator into Photoshop. It will be in the folder with the original RAW file. And only then send the LUT from 3D LUT Creator to Photoshop. If there are no open documents in Photoshop, you can transfer the LUT immediately with the TIFF file. Let's take a closer look at the second way. I'm going to open LibRAW tab. These settings need to be set before you load the RAW file into 3D LUT Creator. After development, you will not be able to change these parameters of the file with the help of a LUT. Development parameters determine which image data you will eventually work with. 
If you have already developed RAW and want to change the settings, then you will need to delete or rename the created TIFF and load the RAW again, so that the new TIFF file is created with the new parameters. Let's analyze the development settings. RAW color space is the color space in which the RAW file will be opened. In 3D LUT Creator, you can choose three color spaces. They have different color gamut. The wider the gamut, the more colors the color space can contain. sRGB has the narrowest gamut. Adobe RGB is wider. Photo has the widest color gamut. How can this be used? If your photo contains highly saturated colors, for example, the picture is too warm and the red channel goes out of the gamut border. It makes sense to use a color space with a wider gamut, such as Pro Photo. Color spaces are divided into two groups, with RAW in the name and without it. If you choose a non-RAW color space, the source file will be immediately converted to the selected color space. The color matrix will be applied to it during conversion. The RAW in the name means that the source file will be the same as it was written from the camera sensor. LUTs will convert its colors to the selected color space using the color matrix in 3D LUT Creator. Let's look at some examples. I developed the same RAW file with different color space settings. The first photo is developed in sRGB space, the second in RAW sRGB, the third in Pro Photo, and the fourth in RAW Pro Photo. I roughly adjusted these files in terms of brightness and contrast. Despite the fact that the colors look the same after applying the LUT, all four TIFF images will differ in color. Here is the TIFF when developing in sRGB. Here is the TIFF when developing in RAW sRGB. Pro Photo TIFF files will differ even more, although the result is the same after applying lots. By the way, pay attention to the size of the files in pixels. Both the camera JPEG and the developed RAW file from the X-T2 in Photoshop have a resolution of 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. Developed file in 3D LUT Creator has a size of 6032 by 4028 pixels. And if we consider that LibRAW does not use lens profiles, we get much more information on the photos developed in 3D LUT Creator compared to other editors. I will show this with an example. I have loaded a camera JPEG here. Notice how much information is added around the edges of the frame. Your raw files literally store more data than you think. Next comes the choice of demosaic. That is an algorithm that will produce a color image from a mosaic. There are five demosaics available in 3D LUT Creator. I developed this photo with all five demosaics in the raw sRGB color space. If you look at the whole photo, you will not notice the difference. So I will turn on 100% magnification. With Linear Demosaic, artifacts appear on the contrasting boundaries of objects. As the Demosaic number increases, these artifacts decrease and disappear. From the point of view of image sharpness, I did not notice the difference between the last three Demosaics, so I decided to evaluate these Demosaics for the appearance of Moiré in the photo. I developed a RAW file from Sony with all Demosaics except Linear. Let's see how they work. I will judge by the level of Moiré on the girl's collar. Please note that there is almost no Moiré with the AHD mosaic. Here is the developed image from Lightroom for comparison. In Lightroom, I completely processed this image, adjusted the color, contrast, and sharpness. So I applied a sharpening plugin to the AHD mosaic development. Here's what happened. In fact, I got even less Moiré than in Lightroom. You can look at the Moiré on the shorts. Here is the development of Lightroom. There is a small Moiré here. Here is the development in 3D LUT Creator with AHD Demosaic. It noticeably looks better. Next comes the slider for selecting the number of Demosaic passes. I did not notice any visible differences after I increased the number of passes. I personally usually leave this slider at the maximum all the time. 
Noise reduction also works almost imperceptibly. Therefore, I recommend disabling noise reduction in LiBRA settings and suppressing the noise in Photoshop. There are quite a few plugins for noise reduction, they do this much better. Please note that using noise reduction with some camera sensors, for example with X-Trans from Fujifilm, can lead to this result. Next comes the choice of an algorithm for overexposure restoration. You can clip highlights, unclip, blend, or rebuild in various ways. I developed a sunset shot from Nikon D750 with all algorithms. LUT in Photoshop is turned off to better see the differences. Let's zoom in the overexposed area and see how the algorithms work. This is what a photo looks like if you clip highlights. Now unclip, here is blend and rebuild versions. The first clip algorithm seems to me more natural, so I usually use it. In any case, working even with such a source image, you get a much larger dynamic range than in JPEG. If the information in the highlights is very important to you, you can choose a different algorithm. If you tick off Load White Balance from RAW Files, White Balance settings will not be loaded to 3D LUT Creator during development. I do not recommend doing it because it is easier to start with camera white balance and then adjust it manually if necessary. I also do not recommend unchecking the checkbox for loading color matrix from raw files. You can still set the white balance by yourself, but you will hardly be able to bring the colors back to normal manually using a channel mixer. What does the checkbox load in UniWB mean? In UniWB, the signals of the image channels from camera sensor are displayed as they are. I have a file developed in UniWB. At first look, there are no differences here. But if I compare the original TIFF files after development in the normal mode and in UniWB, in UniWB, the source image will have a green tint. Because in reality, the signal from the green channel is stronger and the blue and red channels will be darker. In practice, the red and blue channels are always pre-amplified. This does not happen in UniWB. The image developed in UniWB mode is as close as possible to what is taken from the camera sensor. Next are the checkboxes for using line noise reduction and posterization. But in practice, I have not noticed any effect from their use. The last setting allows you to automatically reload the RAW file after changing the live RAW settings. So, we figured out the settings for developing RAW files in 3D LUT Creator. It was a difficult lesson. It took me a very long time to prepare. I hope you liked it. If something is not clear, you can ask a question in the comments. In the next video on developing RAW files, I'll take a closer look at the practical side of this process. Bye everyone!